Welcome to the British Esports Championships 2021 Grand Finals behind the scenes. I am here joined by James from the Queen's Mary College, who is one of the people responsible for writing the BTEC course in esports. James, what can you tell us about your experience today so far? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having us, um, particularly here at Confetti. This is the first time that I've been here, but what a magnificent setup um, and an arena that you guys have got here. It's been a real privilege to, to kind of be a part of the, of the champs. Um, unfortunately, my samurai fell at, at the, at the semi-final hurdle, but this is certainly another incentive to, to kind of get ourselves ready to be here in person next year. Absolutely. We hope to see your players come next year to the Land Grand Finals. But I want to touch a bit upon the fact that I just mentioned uh, you are one of the people responsible for writing the BTEC in eSport course. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. I was very lucky to be asked by um, our friends over at the British Esports Association um, to help write, as you say, the first ever Esports BTEC in conjunction with Pearson. Um, we were hastily put together to, to kind of come up with a specification involving 20 or so units that are really specific to the business elements, the media elements, the sport and also esports kind of niche areas um, of the ever-growing esports industry. So we started with the single diploma option with September just gone. We're now moving ahead to this coming September by doing uh, the single diploma, but also the extended diploma um, for first and second year students. And we've seen our, our kind of numbers grow from 65 to 150 students now coming in September. So I think that really shows what a wonderful job that Pearson and, and the BEA have done. We've also heavily involved with the, the champs every Wednesday. We've got five teams uh, this year who did uh, Rocket League, League of Legends, Overwatch as well. And no doubt with the numbers that we've got coming in September, we're expecting another three or four teams on top of that. So it's just great to be a part of it. That's fantastic. But I want to ask you maybe from uh, someone that's watching this video or this interview from a more casual perspective, how did you get into esports and why do you think esports is an important subject to study in school? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, as someone who's, who's only ever taught and, and been in education uh, throughout my career, we noticed a few years ago that when you had students who would have a bit of downtime or they'd have a break or, or a lunch break, they no longer just kind of run out of the classroom. Instead, what they, they'd do, they'd automatically go to YouTube or Twitch and they'd watch their favorite competitions or watch their favorite players or performers. Um, and it suddenly made a lot of sense to kind of look into that in a little bit more detail. We all know that students avidly game, um, but to try and find a way to kind of incorporate that into education made a lot of sense. So about two years ago, we introduced an enrichment of, all, of esports. That's how we kind of got friends with, with everyone at the BEA. Um, and then that in itself kind of led to being a part of the, of the BTEC. What we're able to do now is to have an educational framework that sets students up for digital and future-proof skills. They're able to do communication and logistics and problem solving, as well as looking at different spheres of, of the esports industry. So no doubt there's some naysayers out there, but what we've got is something that is fundamental to a lot of the youth of today. It's fun, it's contemporary, it's engaging, but it's really relevant for kind of the, the future, I say. Absolutely, and I wanted to actually ask you about these skills, transferable skills that you just mentioned, because there are a lot of parents that maybe still would rather be reluctant in uh, their children going to a BTEC uh, esports course. So what can you tell us more about, you know, the transferability of these skills you mentioned, how they can help you in, even in other careers outside of the esports sphere? Yeah, I mean, what, what we're able to say with the BTEC um, and what we're able to say with, with the students who compete in the champs is, it's a really kind of unique microclimate that we've set up where we've got students doing a variety of subjects from business to physics to further maths to French. They all kind of get together on a Wednesday afternoon. You won't find that in other places in college. You won't, you won't find a, a traditional sporting event of, of a football on a Wednesday afternoon or rugby where you get 10, 15 people kind of watch. You're, you're watching the 4,000 views that we've got today, say, as an example. That in itself is encouraging students to kind of communicate differently or communicate in a way that as adults and as, as educators, we need to understand and appreciate more. The wonderful things that take place over Discord is just a unique way of having conversations. It's up to us as educators and, and adults 
to really harness that and accept that for what that is because that's where the business is going to go. So you've got students now who can communicate differently, um, but just as well as, as I would have done many years ago. Um, you're, you're creating digital skills infrastructure for an, an economy that is in desperate need of some spark now, particularly because of COVID. And so all of those kind of skill sets, they're only going to help you kind of further down the line, I think, particularly, as I say, with the way that this industry of esports is progressing. Such a phenomenal answer, and I couldn't agree more with you. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Um, now I'd like to ask you, uh, do you have any words you'd like to say from, uh, you know, what have you noticed over this last season from the Samurais, and what would you like to tell your players and your future players for the upcoming season? Oh, good question. So um, I'm really proud to be able to, to kind of watch my first years and second years evolve, both kind of on a personal level, but also in terms of sort of um, playing and competing. They, they put the scrims in every night of the week. They, they've got a vision, they've got a, a kind of journey that they want to go to. Thankfully, some of my players are here today. This is only going to reinforce why we've got to keep practicing. We've got to, we've got to keep doing what we need to do to be here in person next year. We've gone from three teams last year. As, as I said earlier, we're now up to five. Potentially, we may be up to seven next September. That's only another incentive to keep growing the QM Samurai, but allow it a place to kind of nurture and develop and evolve. We've got some wonderful second year coaches who will be able to put an infrastructure in for our new first years as well. And so again, it's just nice to be able to see that because again, you don't get that in other subjects across college and on a national level. This is really a, a unique kind of thing that we're a part of every Wednesday, but it's just wonderful to see. Absolutely. Uh, and maybe one more final question is something a bit more personal. So your history, what is your favorite game all time? How did you actually get hooked into this esports environment? Well, I'm not a traditional probably esporter and I'll probably get booed now for saying this, but I mean, I'm, I'm quite old. I mean, I, I grew up uh, with an Amiga 500. I know, right? And there's a lot of people frantically going to Google what on earth that is right about now. Um, my, my idea of escapism at this moment is I'm very fortunate to have a PlayStation 5. So, so you know, I'm enjoying the, uh, the likes of Warzone still at, at this precise moment. But what, it's, what eSports has given me is a whole new kind of lease of life of watching my players just get so immersed in things like Overwatch and, and Rocket League. So it's just another string to my bow and, and another hobby for me to kind of diversify my types of games now to see what the students are competing in and enjoying and again it's just another wonderful unique thing of, of esports really well thank you so so much for your time it was a pleasure to have you here on the interview for the youtube channel for the british esports i hope you're going to enjoy the rest of the finals and i can't wait to see the samurais next season pleasure was mine thank you so much